Well, we got the drone up recently, flying around Glasgow. Now, if you're my age or older, maybe if you're around my age, uh, this scene's really going to mean something exciting to you. For me, it's forever associated with the Glasgow Garden Festival, 1988. We'd only just recently moved to the West Coast. Um, I grew up for the first nine or ten years of my life on the East Coast, just outside Edinburgh. Came through here, and uh, just months after we arrived, this Glasgow Garden Festival starts happening, and we got to go with the school and... Wow, it was just so amazing and exciting and Glasgow was bigger and it was noisier and people were much more forthcoming and more friendly and I was getting older, I was getting to the age where I could start going places myself and it was just all so exciting. And of course the SECC was there as well and the Bells Bridge and uh, one of my cousins got married in the, in the well it was the Moat House but the Crown Plaza Hotel which you see over there. And then as I got into my kind of late teens, 20s, the Armadillo came along as well. And it's just always been such an exciting area. Obviously, the site over here, where the BBC and STV are, that lay derelict for much longer. But as I started getting into you know, my career in journalism, and to one day work at the BBC, to walk into that building, to work at BBC Scotland, have my own radio show in there, be part of that big machine... Uh, was really exciting. It wasn't all positive, but I'm very glad that I did it. Uh, there's a premiere in, and just in front of the premiere in's STV, where I did the gadget slot on the hour, which was brilliant as well. I think so much of what I'd done in radio, I'd been working on my own, you know, four hours a day locked into this little, the confines of this radio studio, which I loved because I had so much control. I could say pretty much whatever I wanted. I could take calls and engage the audience, shape that whole program. But working in television at STV was with much more of a team, much bigger resource, less content, less to do, but it meant that you could spend more time on it. You had a researcher, whoa, where are we going? I'm getting seasick here. Had a researcher working on the programme, floor managers. You know, it was great seeing how all that worked as well and learning about how you tell stories through video and putting together these reports. These organisations, STV and the BBC, whether you like them or not, they are so powerful and so influential. In a country of our size, if you can get your organisation featured there, then so many of the other benefits that you're looking for, you know, awareness, reach, some digital clout, SEO, those kinds of things, uh, BBC Scotland and STV can really help with that. And they are staffed by, in my view and in my experience, some terrific people. Not just the people that head up the programmes that you see on screen or that you hear on the radio, uh, but there's so much goes on behind the scenes and they both have huge digital offerings as well. So there's a lot more to them than just the, the linear television and for the BBC's case, the linear radio as well. There's all the digital offerings, there's the iPlayer, there's the STV player app as well. There's good people working there and there's a whole breadth of programming. And what I'd really encourage you to do, whatever kind of sector you're in, whatever business it is that you're in, try and become a little bit more familiar with, uh, with these organisations. Get to know the variety of programmes that the BBC and STV uh, produce. Get to know the individuals, the producers, the researchers, the journalists, Find them on Twitter, find them on LinkedIn. Learn a little bit about the way that they operate. It won't take you long to do that. And uh, of course, it's something that we can help with as well. A lot of clients talk to us about our, our insight, our knowledge of the media. Sometimes it's just opening a few doors, getting things started for you. I think we're very lucky that we live in a pretty small country. The amount that's on our doorstep. Now, even if you're in Aberdeen or you're in the Highlands, you know, BBC Scotland has a remit to serve more than just the central belt. So while the main headquarters might be here at uh, Pacific Quay in Glasgow, you know that they have outlets uh, in Dumfries and in the borders and through in Edinburgh and up north and all over, all over Scotland. Um, it's a lot more accessible uh, to us than it is for people in other nations um, and even, frankly, in other regions of the UK. And I think, whether, again, whether you like it or not, our big broadcasters come under huge scrutiny. Uh, and I always find them very reasonable and accessible and very interested in what's going on. Look at this. What an absolutely stunning uh, part of the world this is. 
you know, and uh, I love the juxtaposition there between we still, we're not entirely out of manufacturing and industry. It's still a big part of what makes this country special, what built this city and what role it might play in the future. We see the Waverley docked up down there. Uh, it's going through a difficult period, obviously, but still, of course, tourism really important to us as well. And I love here that, you know, programs for the whole of the UK and beyond can be made here in in this part of, of Scotland. There you see the boat going up the river as well, opening up the river too. And uh, of course, when we get out of lockdown and we get the big events at the Armadillo and the SEC and the Hydro coming in, I think this whole area still has so much more to offer. And I know from the people that I, I know and speak to at BBC and STV, they want more people to get involved. They want a, a more diverse range of voices coming in the programmes as contributors. They want to share their resources. They want to make more interesting programmes about Scotland. Uh, there's more voices that we can get on as well. So I would always encourage clients, don't be afraid of the media. Be careful with any preconceptions that you might have about the media. Get to know them. Do some research. Spend some time with them. And I think you will find them, uh, most of the time, a really powerful ally. I think you'll find that the Scottish media pretty much wants the same things that you and I do. We want to live in a healthy, prosperous, uh, exciting nation. Oh, we're getting seasick again. <laughs> Thanks for watching.